Hi everyone, Wes here for Family Gamer TV and I've got my son Joe here with me today and we're going to be talking about 12 from Bossa Studios, the creators of Surgeon Simulator and I Am Bread. Where it's basically a 2D platformer mixed with maths. And they're two of Joe's favourite things in the whole world. Yes, he does seem to like maths for some reason. Um, but it's very much uh, an educational game as well as a platformer. Developed in conjunction with a company called Amplify in the US who provide digital educational solutions for kids and teachers alike. So each level, as you approach them, has those portals, starting with addition portals. And uh, how do you use the numbers? Um, well, you drag them into the portal and then you... Um do whatever with them as the um, calculation said. So if you were 12 and you divided by and you got dragged a two number into a division cog, then you'd um, turn into six. And the whole reason you do that is because the puzzles are all geared around specific numbers and using specific numbers because each one has a power, kind of like a superpower associated with it, doesn't it? Tell us a bit about that, Joe. So every number from 1 to 9 has um, a different power, so like, um, so far we know that 3's can climb, 4's can push these rock-like animal things called gruffle trumps. Gruffle trumps. <laughs> um, and 5's can swim, 6's can go on zip lines. Um, nines and nines can jump really high. And so there's a few that we haven't discovered yet because all of these get kind of revealed as you progress through the levels and through the worlds. But the cool thing about them is not only can you have one superpower, but you can have multiple because when you use these portals, what can what can happen? So if you're 36, then you'd be able to go on zip lines and climb walls. And there's quite a bit of challenge here as well, because it's not just doing the maths, um, but it's doing the maths in the right order to be able to solve the puzzles in the right way. And uh, you find some of them quite challenging, didn't you, Joe? Yeah, because some of them you have to get to a certain number to unlock a gate or something. Sometimes you have to unlock that gate and then change the number. So say you were um, 45 and you unlock the gate. But then you, but then there was a wall you had to climb, so you'd had to change the three. Um, and on top of that, though, there's some helpful hints, and there's also a rewind function as well, isn't there? Yeah. So if you die, so if you like land on spikes, or if you get hit by rocks, or if you fall off bridges, or go into water when you're not a five, um, it it all goes like blurry, and you have to press the rewind button. And sometimes when you get things wrong, you have to rewind. Yeah, so if you do your sums wrong and you end up with the wrong number, uh, you don't just carry on aimlessly not knowing what to do. You can just rewind and undo your sums and redo them again so that you can get the right number. And you can keep trying until you get the right thing. So from an educational point of view, you do need to be at a certain level already to, to play this game in order to then you know, increase your ability. You know, Joe's eight years old and he's pretty competent at maths, I'd say. Yeah, not rubbish, at least. No, he's not bad. He's not, he's not bad at maths. Um, top group at school. Ooh, he's in the top group at school. I didn't want to tell you that. It felt like boasting. But I'll let him boast for himself. Um, he's doing all right at maths. Anyway, so he's eight. And um, I think you probably need to be around that age and quite competent at maths um, to really be able to play the game to its fullest. But at the same time, there's opportunities for me to help you, isn't there? Yeah, because there was one where you had an add and a divide that can only work once each and you had like um, a three and a two and you had to become a 13. I can't remember what number you were but you had to become a 13. And it was quite tricky even for me. I was scratching my head for a few minutes trying to help Joe and I did it at A levels as well. So uh, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. Um, anyway, the, the game's really really fun. Joe's having a great time with it. You'd probably give it how many thumbs up would you give it? Um, I don't have enough hands. He doesn't have enough hands. He's, he's really, really enjoying it. And it's a great way to learn as you play. You know, if you had the opportunity to do this in a classroom rather than the maths that you do do in a classroom, which one would you pick? 
Um, I would pick the first one, and also my school have got iPads. So we might be able to get 12 a dozen into schools maybe as well. Um, it would certainly help, I think, and kids would definitely love it. Um, from a design standpoint, you know, the, the levels look great, the music as well, and we should mention the, the voiceover. So there's the character Dot talks to you out through, throughout the whole game, doesn't she? Yeah, she talks a lot. She's a bit of a chit-chat. Um. Um, but yeah, we're having a great time with 12 A Dozen. I would highly recommend you check it out and let us know what you think about it. Um, obviously, make sure you're the right age for it and uh, if you've got a parent who can help you or if you're a parent watching this, um, get it for your kid and interact with them while you play it because I'm sure they'll need your help at points and it might just leave you scratching your head as well. For information on the game head to www.12adozen.com or search for 12 a dozen on the Apple App Store. So if you've played 12 a dozen leave us a comment and let us know what you think and of course if you've played any other apps especially ones that might interest Joe then please leave a comment and let us know and we'll take a look at those as well. Uh, but hit that subscribe button which is where Joe? So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of those videos. And of course, stay tuned for more from Family Gamer TV.